Cinema Classics is sponsored by the Gateway Film Center and is produced by John DeSando and Johnny DiLoretto. Listen to shows online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Johnny DiLoretto. And this is Cinema Classics. Yeah. A classic. It's becoming a big, big classic. What? And that's a whole streaming network called Netflix. Yeah, man, is it a powerhouse or what? You know how I know it's a powerhouse? Is that you watch it. <laughs> and you want to know why I'm watching? Because you introduced me to it. Yeah, it's and amazing, right? I think I knew that I had to, once they had Roma in 18, I think, mm -hmm. I think I knew I had to deal with it. So what's interesting to me about Netflix is I can remember, I can remember when it first kind of came on the scene and it was a DVD rental uh, yes. business. <laughs> and you would go online and you would pick what movies you would want to watch, and they would send the DVDs to you. Yes. And then you'd send them back. Yes. And I remember thinking, this is ridiculous. How stupid. <laughs> then it popped up as a streaming service. And I also remember thinking, what are they, crazy? And you'd go on there, and it would be a bunch of garbage. <laughs> garbage. Piece of crap after piece of crap. What an idea. And you would be like, this is silly. And somehow, they've transformed from being a DVD service to, to a legitimate streaming service, and then a producer of their own content. All right, so tell me why it's successful. I, I can't tell you. I, well, here's why it's successful is because they've transformed it from that stupid thing yeah. into this powerhouse producer of Oscar-winning movies. Yes, and that's the point, I think. You, you, uh, you make them and they'll come. If you make good movies, they'll come. And they are making movies. They're and not only series. getting movies. And They're, series. Yeah, yeah. And series, so you have both films and you have TV. Now, I'm, I'm and documentaries. Yes, of course. I, I just I was just looking at the films that are currently available on yeah. Netflix. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Yeah, Irishman, right? Marriage Story, Two Popes. Yeah, and those are just three of the movies they produced this year. Yes, which will I guarantee you all turn up on the yes. best uh, yes. picture list. Yes, even Dolomite. Okay. And oh, yeah, that was another one they yeah. did. That was produced by Netflix. And I don't think they produced Black Panther, right? No, they did not, okay. but it's on there. Yeah. Um, and there are some other smaller ones that I told you about. The Highwaymen mm -hmm. um, with, I think... Oh, oh, uh, yeah, uh, Kevin Costner. Costner and, and Woody, Harrelson. Woody Harrelson. Yeah. I think that is a Netflix original. Is it okay? Yeah. And that's a good one. Kind of lost. Not as spectacular as the others. Right. So, so you can see important films that you want to be up on when the Oscars come here at Netflix. This is incredible. Well, I think what we're seeing, too, is, you know, uh, when big movie studios are reluctant to spend a lot of money on you know, uh, artistic projects that might be a little more commercially risky, um, Netflix is willing to spend the money. Yes. Uh, case in point, The Irishman is, you know, um, probably the most, I think it's the most expensive movie Netflix has ever produced. Well, I can understand why, since they sent me about a $200 coffee table book on Irishman. Nice. I mean, wow. You, imagine they sent this. Down. I want to see that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, and so, you know, um, our traditional uh, great directors, the the you know the artists that we consider great directors, are more and more going to Netflix. Sure. Remember the Ballad of Buster Scruggs? Oh yes, that Colin was a good Brothers. one. Yeah. If you would have told me back then, whenever they were mailing out those stupid DVDs, that you know, ten years from now, the Coen Brothers and Martin Scorsese are going to go crawling right. to Netflix to make the movies, I would have thought you were crazy. Throw in younger ones like Noah Baumbach with the Marriage Story. Yeah, and and, uh, and you're getting big. No TV, and he's not the Meyerowitz things too. The ah, Meyerowitz, okay, right? sure. On there. Yeah. Now TV. Yeah. Not my field at all. It's Wayne's, but it's not mine. Okay. Uh, and you watch enough of it that you can tell us about Netflix and TV. I of course know that you're watching The Crown. 
Yeah. Right? I started watching The Crown. Yeah. yeah. You know that I watched... Man, that is so lavish. Is that, is that, is it looks great. like a... You would love that. <laughs> well, well, you know um, that I love Twilight Zone. Yeah, and then we got that on there. <laughs> yes, and we have that on there. Um, and then there are some that people know about they don't even know it's Netflix. Breaking Bad? Mm-hmm. Is that Well, that there. was not Netflix, but right, you but can watch it on there. Right. Yeah. And Friends and Mad Men. Oh, it's all, yeah, yeah. So here's another thing that they've been doing, smartly, is tapping into the current craze for true crime documentaries. Okay. So there are a, a number of uh, true crime documentaries on there right now about serial killers uh, and whatnot. One of the better ones that I started watching, which is fascinating, is called Don't F With Cats. Okay. And it's about these uh, really disturbing videos that turned up online uh, during the Wild West period of the social media um, of a guy uh, killing kittens. And this online community that launches their own investigation through social media and through the internet to track this oh, guy yes. down. Oh, yes, yeah. Fascinating. Oh. Really well done. It's three parts, you know? Well, I was... And that's, that's the other thing is they, they know how to break this stuff down. Well, I think that they know how to, how to entice... Your your precocious son, Franco. Mm -hmm. Stranger Things. Stranger Things. Wow. Yeah. Of course. That's like one of their biggest. Uh, <laughs> yes. Biggest. Endeavors. So what is it about that? I've I've seen an episode or two. Well, yeah. I don't know. I think one, it taps into all of that. Uh, the stuff that was so much fun about uh, the '80s adventures. Like, yes. You know, ET groups of kids on bicycles solving problems good one. themselves. Yes, you know? good one. Uh, and that's and then adding in some, some sort of John Carpenter-esque grotesquerie around it. <laughs> well, I understand <clears throat> they have become so influential that people who are turned off by current politics go back to West Wing that oh, they can that right? see on Netflix. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. I have not heard that. Yes, yeah, just to kind of chill out mm -hmm. with politics as they would like it to be, I presume. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of uh, kids, jumping back for a second, they've recently uh, started dabbling in uh, animation. There was a really beautifully animated film uh, that came out in December called Klaus, which was a sort of uh, different, a variation on uh, the Santa Claus or origin story. Okay. With some great voice work uh, by uh, Justin, or what's the guy's name? Jason Schwartzman. Oh yes, and um, and the other guy. Uh, ah, forget it. Whatever. <clears throat> well, knowing that your wife Summer probably takes care of the finances in your house, <laughs> I'm going to ask you how much it costs per month to be a Netflix person. I don't know. Do you, <laughs> you wouldn't have an idea. I think it's somewhere in the high teens, isn't it? Now maybe it was ten. <laughs> I'll tell you. What, yeah, I remember. It's not bad. I know that. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. It's not bad. And uh, here's a, here's a sweet deal because we, and we can't talk about Netflix. I think without talking about the other ones, Hulu, Amazon Prime, both of them produce their own yes, stuff. Yes. Yes. And a lot of really great stuff. We have all of it. We have Amazon Prime, which you get if you're an Amazon Prime member. Okay. Uh, that just comes with it. Okay. So that's cool. Um, Hulu, also pretty cheap, and. Actually, uh, with her, because she's a PhD student through Kent State, um, she gets a package deal. So we get oh. we get Hulu, Amazon, and we get it all for like a, a pittance, a pittance, <clears throat> a, a treasure trove of content. Now, we're pretty good guys, and here we are helping out a billion, billion, billion dollar enterprise by giving them prime time mm -hmm. NPR well, radio right yeah. here. New, Netflix has not reimbursed us for this. They should, but they haven't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, okay, so that's that's interesting. Well, we did a we did a show on uh, A24 films. You remember that? Yes, we did. And so A24, they they also didn't right. remunerate. And we did a show where we have up and comers in Amazon, Wildfire. Yeah, remember? Right. Yeah. Right. So we're pretty we're pretty Catholic. We're tapped in. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it. I, I'm not even thinking about. I don't want to necessarily uh, sell people on this stuff. Other than if you can seek out the content, there's great stuff to be okay. had there, and they're taking risks that um, that just other studios aren't anymore. Sure, and having me as one, 
And, and another risk is having me watch their shows and being cynical. They could take that too. So this is Netflix. What do you what do you mean being cynical about what you Well, have? I mean I could come back and say, oh, you know, I don't watch TV and this is all TV junk and so on. But I can't. I can't even get close to satirizing this organization yep. because they are doing such good for cinemaphiles and for anybody else who wants entertainment in like your big uh, video room. And what do you think about uh, my big video room? It's <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> What, uh, what do you think about the controversy about getting these movies into the theaters? Oh, boy. <clears throat> Let me just say that uh, I like to see movies in theaters, as you know, and you do too, but you... Of course. Uh, yeah. And, but I love seeing them. That's the way I see them. I rarely see any at home on my computer. Mm -hmm. um, I want to see them for as long as they can possibly be. But yeah. when you've got a billion-dollar organization like Netflix who has put the money up, as you said, taking some risks, they have a right to decide where they want to show their films. Yeah, well, yeah, that's true. I just, my take is that movie, there is, when we talk about films, I, although we don't talk about it explicitly, I do think we're talking about the theatrical experience. We are talking about sitting in a darkened theater and watching it on a big screen, sometimes with a few people, sometimes with a lot of people, sometimes yep. just by yourself doesn't matter how many people. It doesn't matter necessarily how long it plays in the theater. But for me, a movie is, is exactly that. Now, you might see a movie somewhere else, but a movie needs to have that, that theatrical imprimatur, right? That it has, we stamped it. It's been in the theater. You had a chance to see it, maybe. Otherwise, I don't, otherwise it's television. And then it's not, eligible for Oscars, but Emmys only. Yeah. And I'm <clears throat> and I'm all about the communal experience. Now, given the fact that I'm... I don't even care if it's communal, though. You well, know what I mean? Well, you create your community with your family. And you sit around and watch your big screen. And I'm alone. And I want to be out there with people. And especially in the case of comedy, I want to hear them laugh. Because I'm still tough on comedy. Mm -hmm. Except for you. You crack me up all the time. <laughs> <laughs>